Good afternoon. In this video, we're going to run through how to set up a position monitoring device so that we're able to see if the robot goes into a safe position. We can say we're in safe position or if it starts going into a caution position where it potentially could crash with another robot, we can say, okay, we are in a caution area robot hold until this is out of that caution area. So we're going to go through the position monitoring first in this video and then after that we're going to set up a couple different programs to create a flashing light or digital signals to send to the other robot and then we will bring it all together for the cell that we created in the previous video. So in this video again we're going to run through how to set up the positioning monitoring device so that we're able to figure out where we're at. So the first thing we want to do is turn on our teach pendant. When the teach pendant is on, we're going to go to the system variables because we need to turn an object on. So one of the system variables called the machine position monitoring, we need to go turn that on. So we're going to go to the menu and we're going to go to next and we're going to go to system and variables. And everybody's system variables are a little bit different because it all depended on what packages you have loaded. So my system variable that we're looking for is at 594. Yours can be a little bit different. So just kind of look in the high 500s, the low 600. So let's speed this up a little bit by holding shift and then down. And everything is going to be in alphabetical order. So what we're looking for is SCR group. So 594 SCR group. Again, your number could be a little bit different than mine. Just again, look in the high 500s, the low 600s, you'll find it. Then we're going to go to detail and we have a single group. So we're going to detail here and then we're going to go for machine position. For me, it's line 53. So we're going to go down to line 53. And inside find line 53, we have our M, which stands for machine position enable. Right now is yours is false. We wanted to turn it to true. So this allows us to now utilize and save our positions to registers or to position registers or anything else we want to do. So here, when we enable this, this enables line 56 all the way through to line 61, which is machine position X, machine position Y, machine position Z, W, P, and also R. So it allows us to utilize that and set it to a data register. So once we have this system enabled, now we can save these to our data registers so that we can use them in our program. So let's go to data in which we will see I already have a few different registers already being used. I have a speed, I have a counter, and I also have an argument. We'll use those a little bit later. So find a nice area which you'll have plenty of room if you ever need to add a few more here. So maybe in the tens or the twenties in which we're going to add. So I want to add it to number 10. So we're going to add our X, Y, Z, WPR. So each one of these is going to be a different register. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go X position and then we're going to go Y position and then we're going to go Z position, W position, P position, R position. So now that we have X, Y, Z, W, P, R and these registers will now set up. We now need a program to actually tell these registers to update as the robot actually moves. So we're going to go select and we're going to create and we can call this point management or point monitoring or position monitoring, anything that has to do with what it actually do. We're going to do a position monitoring program. Then we're going to go down to detail because there's no motion in this. We're only looking at numbers. We're going to go to group mask and we're going to go down to our asterisk. Now, because we want this running in the background, we have to have this as a group mask so that we're doing a parallel task between the robot and the position. So it's constantly updating that position of that robot in real time. We're going to go then into the actual program. So we're going to go edit. And inside here, we're going to now set up our data registers. So let's go into the instruction and we're going to go to our registers 
and we're going to go down to the parentheses. Now the parentheses allows us to put in an actual parameter name. So I'm going to go down to here. We're going to go register number 10, which is our X position and just previous here so you can see what's happening. So register 10, which is our X position is equal to, I'm going to go inside here. We're going to arrow over, arrow over to where you see parameter name. Now you'll see that we have a dollar symbol for that. Now I took a screenshot of the system variable and I just put in some markings here. So we have a dollar symbol, our SCR group bracket one, and then this program uses something known as a parent and child, so you separate them by a dot. Okay, so much like how you would see in JavaScript or Python, you will see SCR group one, and then you'll put machine position X. So we're going to type in the exact parameter that you see on the screen here. So I'm going to go inside here, I'm going to hit enter in this position, and then we type in exactly what we saw on that screen. So we're going to go SCR underscore GRP bracket one dot dollar symbol. And now we need to have our machine. So machine MC, move my cursor so I can see what I'm doing. So MCH underscore position underscore x okay so now we have our scr group one machine position x and when i hit enter now when i move this the x position will get dumped into our data register number 10 x position so now what i could do is just copy this so i don't have to continuously do this over and over again so copy select and then i'm going to go down here and then we'll go paste logic and then we'll just keep pasting this so that I have six different ones. Okay, so once I have these, now all I have to do is go inside here, get out of my pasting and then go 11, which is our Y position. 12 is going to be our Z position. Our W is going to be 13. Our P is going to be 14, and then our R is going to be 15. Then all we have to do is change the last item on that machine position. So we have our X, X, Y, and we have to go in here, arrow over, and change this to Y, enter, go inside here, enter. And we have to make sure that this says Z position. Go inside here. This is going to be our W position. Go inside here. This is going to be our P position. And then our last one is going to be our R. So it's taking all six coordinates of our robot and it's dumping it into the data registers. Now we want to do this continuously in the background. So we can call or we can run this for each program, but there's an easier way to do this. Okay, so we're going to go under menu. And inside menu, we're going to go to setup. Then we're going to go arrow over and we're going to go to something known as background logic or BG logic. Inside the BG logic, we're going to go under program. So click here and we're going to go choice. And then we're going to find our position monitoring program and then we're going to enable it. So we're going to go inside here and we're going to run. So now this program is going to continuously run over and over and over and over and over again in the background, updating our numbers on our robot. Okay, but there is one little side effect to this. Now, because this is a monitoring device, it only runs when it is in our actual run mode or our cycle start mode. It does not run in teach mode. So it only runs in T1 mode. So if I go here and then I run a circle example here, so I have a circle 
created here to kind of go inside that tripping area, we'll be able to see the actual position monitoring. So I went to my data registers here and I'm going to run that circle program. So as it runs, you'll notice that it updates those numbers in real time. So this is big, this is huge. So now as we update these numbers, and you can see as we go through that magical laser fence there, we can say, okay, so we can have a digital output. So when it's in a caution area, we can have a digital output when it's in the safe area. So now we can communicate to other robots or other machines like lathes and CNC's through a digital port saying that, hey, I'm in safe position. Hey, I'm not in safe position. So this is a big, 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 big thing. So the next video we're going to set up to find out if we're in our safe position, our green light is going to flash. If we're in our unsafe position or a caution area, a yellow light will flash, signifying that, hey, we're going through the cycle, we're in our safe position, we're in a unsafe position.